So what we have here is some object, and we're going to put a force F on this object at a distance R away from some pivot point. We're going to call this pivot point P. So what I want to do is go through and actually work out the magnitude of torque acting on this object. Now, of course, in order to work out a magnitude of torque, we're going to need to have some quantities for both the radius and the force. So what we have here is both the radius and force expressed in component forms, which are at play in this problem. Now we've seen in the past that torque is defined as R cross F. And typically what we do is we say that torque is then equal to in two dimensions, R F sine theta. And it would be completely acceptable to solve this problem using R F sine theta. Now, because these two quantities, both the radius and the force, have been given to us in component form, we would need to use the Pythagorean theorem to come up with actual magnitudes, and then we would to need to do a little bit of trig to come up with the directions of both of these vectors, as well as the angle between them. But what I want to do is back up to this, the cross product, and show you exactly how to use a cross product rather than working out magnitudes and the angle between these vectors to solve this problem. Now today I'm using torque as an example, but this method could be applied to any two vectors in which we're trying to find the cross product between them. So to solve for the total torque using the cross product, what I want to do is look at the torque around point P. So I'm going to call that torque around P here. And to solve a cross product, what we do rather than working out magnitudes and directions is we set up a three by three matrix. Now the first line of our three by three matrix is simply defining the three directions in which we're dealing. We have an I, J, and a K direction. And this is based on just a regular coordinate plane. Where I is in this positive horizontal direction, J is upward and K, or in the Z direction, is out of the page. Now the next line we're gonna put in our three by three matrix is the radius vector. It's important when you're dealing with cross products that you do things in the correct order. R cross F is not the same as F cross R. So we need to put in the, the first quantity with which we're dealing with. In this case, that is radius. So I'm gonna take my components up here and substitute them in down here. So beneath the I, we're gonna have the I component of our radius vector. Beneath the J, we're gonna have the J component of our radius vector. And beneath the K, we're gonna have the K component of our radius vector. Then we'll do the same thing with force. So to find the total torque around point P in this problem, all we need to do is find the determinant of this three by three matrix, or just solve the matrix. Now there's lots of different ways to solve a matrix like this. Uh, I'm going to go through and use what is more or less called a graphical method of solving a 3x3 three three matrix. And so what I'm going to do, rather than breaking this up into smaller 2x2 two two matrices as some people would, I'm going to simply work my way through this in diagonals. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this i times a 4 times a 0. And this is going to give me a component of the total torque. So using this matrix, we're going to have 0i plus, I'm going to do the same thing from the j working down at an angle here. Now you'll notice there's nothing over here, so I'm simply going to copy this column here, j times 0 times 5, that's 0j, plus, lastly I have k, and again I need to copy this column now. This is going to leave me with 3k. Now, the reason I'm going through and doing this this way, um, I don't want to get into. I don't want to get into why we work out a matrix the way we do. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to show you we can use a matrix to solve for torque. Now, I'm only halfway through solving for the determinant of this matrix. Next, what I need to do is, again, work down this way, starting at K, working down and to the left. And why that is, we're not playing that game today. Just, just go with it. Now, as we work our way down and to the left, the quantities are negative, so I'm going to have negative 5 times 4 times k. 
So that's negative 20k minus here, I'm gonna have zero i. And here, I'm going to have minus zero j. And what we're left with for the total torque here around point P is simply in the k direction. You'll notice all of our i and j components were zero, so we have only a torque in the k direction or around the z-axis, uh, and you're gonna find that works out to be negative 17k. Now, I wanna be really clear about this. This k, these aren't units. This is the direction. This is telling us what direction the torque vector is in. You'll notice I didn't have any units up here for either my radius or my force. If I chose to say the units here were meters and the force was in newtons, then I would wind up with a torque that was in newton meters or, or meter newtons if you want to start an argument, I suppose. This K is simply telling us the direction of the torque. Now go back to the right hand rule, which we've seen before. Our right hand, we point our fingers in the direction of R, curl them in the direction of F, and the, our thumb is pointed into the page. That is effectively telling us the direction of the torque vector. I want you to realize the right hand rule is nothing other than a cross product or a trick for determining the direction of the determinant of a cross product. If this result had been positive, that would mean the torque was out of the page. Now this may seem like an awful lot of work to do uh, when we could have just gone through and solved for magnitudes and directions. So what I wanna do is complicate this problem a little bit. So instead of having both the radius and the force lie in the plane of the page, let's have the force come out of the page some. All right, so now rather than having the force just lie on the plane of the page, we've got the force directed out of the page sum. So it now has a component in the k direction. So now rather than having the force just in the plane of the page with zero component in the k direction, what we've done is we've added a component of this force that is coming out of the page. So it's like this vector is actually coming towards you. Hence, I, I drew it. Kind of fancy, I like that. That's a good arrow, I'm gonna be honest with you. So now we're looking at a situation where if you had to go through and solve for the torque using RF sine theta, this would be a little bit of a chocolate mess. Yeah, R, its magnitude and direction would be easy, but this being in three dimensions, just a pain in the butt. And coming up with the angle between these two vectors now is just a, just a mess. I don't wanna play that game. So now we really see the usefulness in setting up a matrix like we did here. So again, I'm gonna set up a three by three matrix. So this time you'll see the component of the force vector in the k direction is not zero. So you can see again, first I set up the three different directions or axes in which we're working. I then laid out the components of the radius followed by the components of the force. And again, I'm gonna solve this matrix. So now you can see we have the determinant of this matrix, or in physical terms, we have the torque around point P by this force, which is coming out of the page. Now you'll see this time, this torque has components in both the I and J directions. That is to say it has a horizontal and vertical component, as well as a component out of the page. And if we use the right hand rule here, R cross F, we can see the determinant is going to be in the positive horizontal direction, it's gonna be down toward the bottom of the page sum, and it's going to be into the page. That's exactly what our signs are reinforcing here. Now, if I wanted to come up with a total magnitude of torque here, I could simply combine these using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, it might seem a little bit strange to express a torque in component form like this. Why wouldn't you just want a magnitude? Why don't you realize in certain cases, this can be extremely useful. This is the expression for the total torque by this force here, but let's say we constrained this little green orb to rotate only in a certain plane. 
For example, let's say we drove an axle through this little orb so that it was only free to rotate in the plane of the page around point P. What that means is any torque which we provide on this object in the I or J directions would not actually produce any motion. It would only be the torque around that axle or in the K direction that would produce motion. So in summation, I want you to realize we can look at torque not only as RF sine theta using magnitudes and directions, but we can also use a matrix to solve for torque using a cross product. Now, when we use a matrix to solve a cross product like this, in this case, torque, uh, what we get is a result in component forms. And what you do with that, whether you turn it into a magnitude and direction or keep it as it is, that's situational. And on that note, that's all for now.